This week, we hold our collective breath as America gets ready to go to the polls. For years, our army struggled to bring the Union back together, but all hint is now on the people. One final week to change people's minds before they quite possibly make the biggest decision in this nation since 1776. Let's start with a bit of disappointment. Major General Curtis has to call off a strike on Price's Army in Missouri, as Major General Bruce Kranz, who commands Missouri, has recalled a part of his force. With Missouri safe, Major General Andrew Jackson Smith can bring his corps to General Thomas in Tennessee. More forces begin to flow into the state, ready to blunt General Hood. He has shifted westward from Chattanooga, but the 4th Corps moves to Pulaski and forces the rebels to wait for Forrest. Did you know that Nathan Bedford Forrest is a naval commander? Technically, he has under his command two captured steamers. He had another one earlier, but... He had another one earlier, the Venus, but it was recaptured. They felt him as part of his attacks on the water-based logistics of Lincoln. The third saw a small artillery duel. The fourth, federal gunboats are sent against Forrest. They blasted apart his ships, destroying his entire navy. But his heavy guns forced the withdrawal of the gunboats, allowing for the bombardment of a Union supply depot, destroying it. There are conflicting claims regarding the casualties, for his self-aggrandizement not being particularly helpful. Nonetheless, it throws into question Sherman's laissez-faire approach to Hood and Forrest. It creates a headache for the quartermasters of General Thomas. The 30th War is over in Europe! The Second Specific War, started in February, comes to a close in an Austro-Prussian victory. Eight months! We've been at war for three and a half years! Denmark loses Schleswig, Holstein, and Naumburg to be duly administered by the victors. What does this mean for us? Not much. The pain is over. The child is born. Nevada this day was admitted into the Union. Despite being a sparsely populated land, Nevada is added to the Union just eight days before the election. Yeah, that isn't a good look. It's Battleborn, the second state admitted during the war. Its territory is filled with silver and gold, which some incorrectly claim aided in their unprecedented admittance. Leaving the controversy of admittance behind, it's good to see another free state in our union. The second Secretary of State warns Mayor Charles Gunther that secessionist agents might attempt to burn down the city of New York on Election Day. Let's end this week with a victory. Plymouth, North Carolina comes back into the Union after a three-day artillery duel with our Navy. As the smoke clears, the star-spangled banner flies over the city. Sickles time! He anxiously waits for the votes. He has done all he can to tip New York to Lincoln. The city is a battleground, and very well can decide the election. That's where the week ends. It is unlikely to make a difference, minus the introduction of Nevada. Nothing really seems to change the issues. There's no last-minute grand victories. It's hard to believe anyone cares about the affairs of German wars when the nation is fighting for its life. As the people go to the polls, the question is not what happened on the first week of November, but what should happen after it. Hi, it's the entire Civil Week by Week team here, and I'd like to thank you for watching. I really do hope to see you next week as we approach the election that decides the fate of America. See you then.